This is a short guide to surviving your first few hours of DCS UH-1H Huey. If you're new to the Huey, you'll likely find that this module stands alongside DCS P-51 as one of the toughest DCS modules to learn. And that's especially true if you've never played DCS Black Shark. What the Huey lacks in switches, it makes up for with the sheer terror of perhaps one of the most accurately portrayed helicopter flight models in desktop simulation. In this video, I'll go over a few important steps to help your early moments with the game to be less frustrating and more productive. Okay, first things first, let's set up our controls. Uh, at a bare minimum, you're going to need some kind of rudder axis. Rudder pedals are preferred, but you could use a twist axis or one of those rockers that you might find on the SciTech X45 throttle. As long as you have an axis to control the rudder pedals, you'll be good. Go into Options. I'm going to go into Control Tab. I'm going to go into UH-1 Sim Axis Commands. And I've already mapped all of my axes. Got my Warthog joystick as the cyclic here. Got the Warthog throttle as the collective. And then my SciTech rudder pedals here as the rudder axis. For joystick Y, we're going to go to Axis Tune. And I usually like to add about 22 points of curvature here. Now that's going to desaturate the center of the stick travel and saturate the outer edges because we get a lot more travel on a real cyclic than we would on a PC joystick. We'll do exactly the same thing to the x-axis. 23 is good enough. Sometimes you can't really be precise with this. And then on the rudder pedals, I like to get it to about 14. On this build, it likes 14, at least from my style of flying it. Your mileage may vary. Feel free to experiment. Finally, and this is optional, on your collective control, I like to desaturate it a little bit because the early part of the collective travel is used for pickups and then the later stages of collective travel is less important to be precise on. And again, it's up to you whether or not you want to have your throttle to have collective up when you pull it back or collective up when you push it forward. I personally do it the reverse of the way it would be on a real helicopter just because I'm comfortable. But you can hit invert if you want to flip it like this and I'll leave it uninverted. And that's the control setup, real simple. One thing to keep in mind is that they're currently improving the flight model. They've posted about it on the Eagle Dynamics forums. And you're definitely going to want to revisit these settings when that happens. And really, whenever they release a patch, it's a good idea to do that. So I'm going to save these settings, and we'll go on to the next step. Now that we're in the game, we'll take a look at one of the more useful interface features of DCS World, and that's the controls indicator. I'm going to bring that up with the right control enter. And this is going to show me exactly where my controls are. My cyclic, rudder, and collective. I'm not going to pull the collective quite yet. This is going to replace that tactile feedback that you would get by actually holding the controls in your hand and pressing on them with your feet. The controls indicator can also reveal to us how we're using our curves. I'm going to set my cyclic to the hover and ground effect position. I'm going to hit the force trim button and now I'm force trim to the lower left hover and ground effect position. You can see here the very center of my stick travel has moved to this position in the corner here and I've got that fine-tuned desaturated control that I set with my curves. Likewise if I was going forward at 100 knots I'd probably trim it to this position up here. Again using the force trim I've moved the center of that curve that I've set to the ideal position for the flight regime that I'm going to be in. And that's very, very important for a helicopter sim. Unfortunately, rudder trim is disabled by default, but you can enable it by going into the Options menu, hitting the Special tab, and then going to the UH-1 tab. So now that we've gone over the Controls Indicator and the Force Trim, let's look at some of the flight regimes that you should learn to get more comfortable in the helicopter. Now the first thing you want to practice is the hover and ground effect. Again, ground effect in an airplane is strongest within an altitude of approximately half of the airplane's wingspan above the ground. But in a helicopter, it's half of the rotor diameter because our rotor is our wing. At this altitude, you'll feel the cushioning effect of the rotor downwash interacting with the ground. Now Fury of 40 did an excellent tutorial on how to perform this maneuver, but I will add that this can also be practiced by doing hover taxis. Add a strong crosswind and observe the tendency of the aircraft to weather vane into the wind while you try to keep the taxiway center line between the pedals. 
It's hard to do at first, but you'll get the hang of it if you practice. You'll also want to practice hovering outside of ground effect once you get the hang of hovering within it. It's going to require a lot more power on the part of the engine, but it's sometimes necessary, especially if you want to hide behind or land on top of a building. Forward flight is the easiest to master and puts the least strain on the engine due to ETL, or effective translational lift. This is produced by the relative wind passing over the rotor blades as the helicopter moves. You want to practice transitioning between forward flight and a hover in order to develop the proper landing techniques as outlined in the manual. As you get better at it, you'll be able to do it fast enough to pull off a combat landing. But don't skip the manual when it comes to learning about pitfalls like the vortex ring state. While VRS is easy to avoid with practice, you'll want to develop habits to keep the helicopter out of it when transitioning between different modes of flight. Last but not least, auto rotation is a critical skill to learn, both for recovering from engine failure and understanding the relationship of the rotor blades to the generation of lift. Furia 40 also did an excellent video on auto rotation, and I suggest you check it out. Finally, you need to practice. It should come together for you in about 10 hours, give or take. This isn't a game you can pick up in an afternoon, and like all of the DCS modules, it'll take patience to learn. When you finally get the hang of it, you'll find that the UH-1 is a fun, maneuverable addition to the DCS World Collection. We've just gone over a few points to cover in your first 10 hours with the DCS Huey. To recap, set up your control axes. Don't forget a rudder axis of some kind. Use the control indicator and force trim. Practice hovering in and out of ground effect. Develop a smooth transition to landing. Understand VRS by reading your manual. Learn to auto-rotate. Practice, there is no substitute. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that it assists you in making your first moments with the DCS Huey a little less painful.